this is a black guy for him. He's he's known as a micromanager. He's he he. he well, it's not just that. I mean, it, he's got his hands in what's going on Wall across his street. Drink. There is just you know this morning there are people gleeful because they see this Jamie's gotten his comeuppance, fair or not. And to his credit, they came out quickly. I mean, I don't think there's many other CEOs on Wall Street who would get on a call and say, "Hey, we were stupid." You know, you're not going to hear many other CEOs. He was say pretty that. clear. If you get on that conference call, you listen through it. You listen through it. I mean, over and over, he said this is an egregious mistake, right. badly executed, and and et his cetera. style is to be very straightforward, upfront about things, and say, hey, we screwed up. This mm -hmm. is it. Now, of course, are they going to try and you know put the the best light possible on this? Yes. And he was very combative about whether you know what the regulatory fallout would be from this. Also, just one little thing. You know, the the bank said they harvested some gains, so the after tax loss on this would be less. Well, that, that's a little bit of window dressing. But the yeah. bigger things, let's keep in mind, Jamie Dimon, a year and a half, two years ago, people were talking about, will Jamie Dimon be the next Treasury Secretary if Obama gets rid of Tim Geithner? You know, that's how high his star has risen. He is the yeah. point man for Wall Street and banks. And when that crown gets dented, everyone sort of stands back and goes, whoa. And he kind of avoided some of the, some of the criticisms. He basically said, yes, this will fire up critics and we'll have to deal with that. But he didn't address questions that said, well, is that legitimate? You know, I mean, Jamie... The vocal rule, there are people that make strong arguments that right. if you want to be a hedge fund, go be a hedge fund. If you're a bank, you need to be boring like a bank. Because, right. of course, these and are insured deposits we're dealing with. Right, and and he he has been a very and vocal critic. He was kind of flip critic. about that. It, well, Jamie's often flip about things. I mean, it, that that's just sort of his nature and his speaking style. But I don't think this is going to change his view. Nor You know, look, if he has a philosophical view of this is what I should be able to do, fine, let's have that debate. And, you know, it's good that this debate goes into of different orbit now, and it, it brings up the whole question of too big to fail banks, and Jamie Dimon has been one of the leading proponents of big isn't bad. Well, maybe we have to revisit that question. And this is the kind of issue that if it blew up, it becomes you know, a systemic risk potentially, well, and we need to be thinking about that JP and preparing Morgan for it. JP Morgan is so important, not just to its shareholders, it is the crucial but to the entire in the banking system, financial right? system. More than any other bank. Yes, I mean, well, probably, I mean, it depends what you're talking about, but yeah, okay, I'll the give derivatives, you that. The derivatives, the derivative system, it, it which is, is perhaps the, the most the systemic biggest risk. derivatives the holdings risk. of any U.S. bank. It is a key part of the payment system. It is half of the market for tri-party repo, which is a key part of the uh, short-term funding markets. It is pivotal to the global financial system. So if they stumble, everyone sort of stands back and goes, whoa. 